Hello everyone and welcome back to the series on time series forecasting. So in this quick video, we'll be going over a very important concept in time series. This is not a strictly machine learning tutorial where we will not be building any models, but we will be exploring a concept known as moving averages. I think having a grasp of moving averages is very important for you to understand time series forecasting. Now, if you want, you can read the entire uh, tutorial on my blog here at mnexplain.blog, as you can see, I've already uh, covered moving averages here, how you can calculate it in quite detail. Uh, but we'll be going over all the concepts I've covered in my blog in this video. So let us first start by loading our libraries. We set the theme, we load our data. We'll be loading the sample Dow Jones uh, data from uh, Seaborn again. Uh, here, as you can see, we have a very simple data set. We have the date, we have the price. Uh, we plot the price against the date. As we, as you can see, there is some price data, right? The Dow Jones index with the prices, they are fluctuating. They go up, they go down. And uh, there's some trend. There's a clear upwards linear trend, but it's not so hard to, uh, you know, uh, it's a little bit hard to capture. If you build a very simple linear regression model, it might just overfit to the data and uh, your forecasting values might be wrong. So what you want is some sort of moving averages which should capture the long-term trends here. So which is the uh, simplest long-term uh, uh, simplest long-term trend that you can capture? Well, that is known as the simple moving average. A simple moving average is just what the name suggests. It's a moving average. It takes the average of the data points in X number of days interval. So if you it takes the average specified by the number of days in the interval. The typical moving averages are 30, 30 50, 100, and 365. These moving averages are usually used by uh, day traders or traders in the stock market for doing technical analysis. Uh, you can simply calculate the moving averages by using the pandas rolling function. As you can see, every data frame has a rolling uh, functionality where you specify the window. What are the minimum number of samples? for that window to be specified as uh, uh, average. Do you want to center those data points or not? Uh, and these are usually axes zero, one, whether you want to do it column wise or row wise. So we calculate the moving averages for Dow Jones for 30, 50, 100, and 65. So with the 30, 50, 100, and this I'm saying if there's a, even in one data, you just take the mean of it. And we plot this data. And as you can see, uh, the price is the blue line, the 30, 50, 165. The blue line is the price. And as you can see, the 30 day moving average most closely tracks the price, right? It tries it because it's the moving average with the least window. 51 also does the same, but it is it lags a bit, it lags a bit more. 100 day moving averages lags a bit more. As you can see, this whole peak, it doesn't really affect it so much because it smooths out with this trough as well. So the peaks and troughs within the data, they are more smoothed out the larger your window is. And as you can see, the 100 day, the 365 day moving average is just a simple straight line which is curving upwards because the whole graph is curving upwards. Now, which moving average do you really need to use is entirely up to you, apart from simple moving averages. Uh, technical traders usually calculate all of this and they have like, okay, this is a 50 day support, 100 day support, 365 day support. Uh, I don't believe in those such things. <laughs> I don't think anyone can predict where the stock market is going, but that's entirely up to you. You can calculate these using stock market data and do an analysis if you want. But what if you want to do uh, you want to give more weight to the recent data points, right? Because one of the drawbacks of the simple moving average is that it gives much more weightage to, uh, not much more weightage, it gives equal weightage to all the points, right? And what if you want to calculate a moving average which gives weightage to more recent points, right? So in that case, what you will do is you will calculate what is known as exponential moving average. The exponential moving average is, as it says, it's exponential. So what it's like, Exponential moving average today is the value today into smoothing. This is some factor that you choose 
this factor is automatically chosen in Panda, so you don't care about it, but usually a value of two is chosen. Uh, smoothing divided by one plus days. This days is the number of days in the window, right? Plus exponential moving average, which was yesterday. And this is again multiplied by some value, which is less than one. So one minus smoothing divided by the number of days, right? So in this, to calculate this, you just use the exponential weighted mean function in uh, pandas. So this one. AWM. So just this one, this you can use to calculate it. And we calculate the 50 day and the 100 day exponential moving average, right? Uh, and we want to see the difference between the exponential moving average and the simple moving average of the 50. So as you can say, this is the price. The simple moving average is less sensitive. As you can see, the exponential moving average tilts more towards the recent points and it drops even faster than the simple moving average. So it rises faster than the simple moving average and drops faster than the simple moving average, which means that it is more sensitive. As you can see here, let me zoom in a bit again. Sorry. If you see here, this tries to capture this trough by moving below and then rising up again. Whereas the simple moving average just keeps on rising, right? Because it is less sensitive to recent data points. Hopefully this uh, made a bit clearer about how you can calculate simple moving average and exponential moving average in, in pandas using pandas and what's the difference between them. For more such tips, keep following. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe.